Hello everyone. Today's unboxing and small review is for the Sega Mega Drive Mini 2. I ordered the system from Amazon UK, which ships worldwide. On the back of the box, you can see a list of all the games. There are 12 Sega CD games, 41 classic games, and 7 original games that come as bonuses. Here is the system in box, close the first Mega Drive Mini. Additionally, this is beside the large PlayStation Classic box. And here it is alongside the SNES Mini box. And here it is next to the Funko Pop Sonic figure. Now for the unboxing. The system only comes with one six-button controller, but you can use third-party controllers like the Hyperkin wireless controller. The controller looks great and is well-made, much like the original. The system looks exactly like the original Mega Drive 2 but smaller. You see here the HDMI port and micro USB for power. And here are two USB controller ports. I like the red color of the power switch and reset button here. And here is a fake cartridge slot looks very similar to the original. And this is the side cover for the fake Sega CD extension port. Now we'll see how small the system really is. To start, we'll compare it to a CD game for the PlayStation 1. Here is our system next to the first Mega Drive Mini and it looks smaller. And here's the PlayStation Classic, which is nearly the same size as the first Mini. And here it is next to my favorite mini console, the SNES Classic Mini. And here it is next to the PC Engine Mini, which is nearly the same size, but as you can see, the Mega Drive 2 is thinner than the PC Engine Mini, making it the smallest mini console. And here it is next to the Super Console X King. They are both about the same size, but the Console X is smaller. And here it is next to the Pixel Pals Sonic LED figure. Now we're going to play some games. The system has 60 built-in games, but I won't test each one individually, instead, I'll show you a selection of them. The menu is detailed and attractive, with great Sega background music.
Rister is a platform game released by Sega in 1995 for the Sega Genesis. The game features an anthropomorphic cartoon character that moves and fights enemies with his hands and long flexible arms. And here is the second Golden Axe game. You can change the language in the settings, once you select Japanese, the game boxes will be changed to the Japanese region. You can also change the screen settings here. You can choose between widescreen and original. There is additional wallpaper option available, but I prefer the original with black borders. And here is the sound setting where you can choose between Mega Drive 1 or 2 sounds. And here is the Super Street Fighter 2 port for the Mega Drive. I found this to be easier to use than the SNES game because it has a controller with 6 buttons that is very similar to the placement of buttons in arcade. Here is the Mega Drive port of the most popular arcade racing game OutRun. Desert Strike was a great action shooter released by Electronic Arts in 1992 that was inspired by the Gulf War. And this is OutRunners, which is another OutRun sequel. I like that it supports two players, in unlike previous games, but I dislike the split screen that appears even in single player mode.
Sonic CD is the only Sonic game for the Sega CD system. It plays similarly to previous Sonic games but with improved CD quality soundtracks and some improvement in gameplay. It is one of the best games in the Sonic series. Here is the action horror beat em up game Splatterhouse 2 by Namco. Final Fight CD was by far the most accurate version of the arcade game for home consoles at the time. It even has a new mode called Time Attack, in addition to the usual CD extras like a rearranged soundtrack, extended cutscenes, and voice acting. Viewpoint is an isometric scrolling shooter arcade game released in 1992 or the Neo Geo hardware family, and this is the home port for the Sega Mega Drive. Night Trap is an interactive full-motion video game that was originally released on Sega CD. Virtua Racing is another Sega arcade racing game with 3D graphics. Vectorman 2 was released in 1996 as the sequel to the action platformer Vectorman. Thank <laughs> you. 
Streets of Rage 3 is the third game in the Streets of Rage series and the final game in the original trilogy for the Sega Mega Drive. The game differs from Streets of Rage and Streets of Rage 2 in several ways, including longer levels, more detailed scenarios, and faster gameplay. Sonic 3D Flicky's Island, or Sonic 3D Blast in the United States, is a 3D Sonic game with an isometric perspective. Alien Soldier is a side-scrolling run-and-gun video game created by Treasure, who also created Gunstar Heroes for the Sega Mega Drive. Yummy Mystery Mansion, also known as Mansion of Hidden Souls in the US, is a Sega CD adventure video game. It has a lot of similarities to puzzle computer games like Myst, Uninvited, and D. Robo Aleste is a vertically scrolling shooter in which the player is flying forward while enemies attack from the front, sides, and back at the end of each level there is a boss that the player must beat to move on to the next level. The platformer run-and-gun game Earthworm Jim 2 is the sequel to the original Earthworm Jim. There's a lot of comedic humor in the game. Each stage has its own unique style and mission, making for more varied gameplay than the original. The Ninja Warriors is a side-scrolling beat-em-up game. In six levels, players control Kunoichi or Ninja to combat waves of Banglar armies in six levels. The game were released exclusively in Japan. This is the home port of Sega's Afterburner 2, the sequel to the same-named arcade flight simulator game. 
It was one of the most popular Sega arcade games. Shadow Dancer is a side-scrolling action game developed and published by Sega for the Sega Mega Drive in 1990. It is the second game in the Shinobi series released for the Mega Drive. You play as a ninja warrior who fights enemies and saves hostages with the help of his loyal dog. Now it's time to talk about the good and bad parts of this system, in my opinion. Pros, a miniature excellent quality replica of the original Mega Drive 2. The large game library and some nice Sega CD titles. Nice menu with a lot of information about each game and great background music. Cons, it comes with only one controller and is more expensive than the original which included two controllers. There is no LED power indicator, which I truly hate because I can't be sure if my system is turned on or not in some cases. This system lacks the rewind function found in many retro games on modern consoles such as the Sega Mega Drive Classics. So, would you recommend this system? If you enjoy retro gaming and collecting mini consoles like me, I am sure you will enjoy this one. If you only want to play Sega games, there are many less expensive options, like the Raspberry Pi or any cheap Android box. That's all I got for today, I hope you enjoy the video. If you found it helpful please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.